In the previous video, we talked about some of the problems with directly accessing RAM and how virtual memory and paging solved those problems. But that was all theoretical. I haven't actually explained how virtual memory works under the hood. So in this video, I'll break down the structure of page tables, how they are stored in memory, and how a dedicated piece of hardware called the memory management unit and the operating system work together to manage virtual memory. Let's go! As I explained in the previous video, pages in virtual memory are mapped to frames in physical memory. To do this, the operating system uses a special data structure that holds information for each page. This data structure is called a page table. Every page table entry includes the physical address of that page in RAM and some additional data we will discuss later in the video. The number of entries in a single page table can be huge. For example, if the virtual memory space has a capacity of 16 gigabytes and the page size is 4 kilobytes, then the total number of pages in the system would be 2 to the power of 22, which requires a page table with almost 4.2 million entries. And since each process has its own virtual memory space, the operating system has to keep a page table for each process. This is like keeping a library of those old phone books for each process. Ironically, because the amount of page data is so large, all of those entries must be kept in physical RAM. Now if we do the math for a second, and assume each page table entry needs 4 bytes to store all information, a single page table would require 16 megabytes of memory. Multiply that by several dozen processes, and you get to hundreds of megabytes just to keep address translation tables. Needless to say, this is unacceptable. Modern systems apply some serious optimizations to overcome this problem, but that's a whole other topic. For now, let's assume each process has a full page table representing its virtual memory space. In this simplified model, I assume that all page tables are stored as an array at a fixed location in main memory, although this is not always true for modern operating systems. Nevertheless, whenever a process is given control of the processor, known as a context switch, the active page table must be updated. This is typically done using a pointer known as the page table base register, which is one of the CPU's protected registers. In this model, changing the active page table is as simple as updating this register to reference the current process's page table. Kind of like clicking the like button on this video. Easy. Each entry in the page table includes several fields. A physical frame number, which is the result of translating a virtual page number. A page table entry also has protection or permission bits. The read-only bit, which determines whether this page can be modified or not. It protects pages from being overwritten, either by malicious software or by accident. The user supervisor bit determines the privilege level required to access the page. A page marked as user mode is accessible to user level or privileged code, but only if it is mapped in the process's page table. A page marked as supervisor mode can only be accessed by privileged code, which is typically the operating system. This helps prevent user-level processes, such as your normal everyday apps, from interfering with or reading sensitive operating system data. There is another common bit used in page table entries called the noExecute bit, which controls whether code from this page can be executed or not. This is a security feature used to mitigate certain types of attacks. Each page table entry also contains status bits, which are mainly used by dedicated hardware called the Memory Management Unit, or MMU. The present, sometimes called the valid bit, indicates whether the page table entry contains a valid physical frame number. If the entry is invalid, it cannot be used for translation. The dirty, also known as the modified bit, indicates whether the page has been modified since it was loaded into memory. This bit is important for knowing if a page needs to be written from main memory back to disk in the future. The accessed bit indicates whether the page has been read or written to recently. It helps the memory management unit track page usage for future caching and page replacement decisions at the hardware level. The global bit is set by the operating system, indicating that the page is shared across all processes. This flag is often used for the operating system's kernel pages. So all this information is stored for each page of every process, starting at a fixed location in RAM. But if the processor has to access RAM just to translate a virtual address to a physical address, wouldn't this mean that for each memory read-write request, two memory accesses are needed? Yes. This becomes very inefficient because the memory access time is effectively doubled, 
and we already know that accessing main memory is slow compared to the speed of the processor. Luckily, we have hardware support to help avoid most of those memory accesses. As I mentioned before, modern CPUs include a hardware component called the Memory Management Unit, which manages all memory requests from the processor. The MMU's job is to translate virtual addresses generated by the processor into physical addresses. But that doesn't mean it just translates everything willy-nilly. When it comes to memory access, the MMU is the sheriff in town. Aside from translating addresses, it also prevents programs from reading or writing memory that doesn't belong to them, enforces permission restrictions, and protects against malicious processes that try to interfere with the execution of other processes or access their data. The MMU is typically integrated into the same chip as the processor cores and their caches. Virtual address translation can occur either before or after a cache lookup. This ordering determines whether the cache is virtually indexed or physically indexed. So what's the connection between the MMU and the page tables we've discussed for the past several minutes? Well, inside the MMU, there's a cache component called the translation lookaside buffer. And since that name is a bit much for me, I'll just call it TLB. The TLB stores copies of page table entries from multiple processes and is used to accelerate the virtual to physical address translation process. TLBs are usually implemented as a fully associative caches to avoid conflict misses in address translation. This simply means that any virtual address can be stored in any available slot in the TLB. The size of a typical TLB ranges between 32 and 1024 entries. Since it's much smaller than page tables, it only keeps virtual to physical address translations that are most likely to be done again in the near future. It's like comparing a city the size of Houston, Texas to a mid-sized coffee shop. TLBs come in two types. The instruction TLB, which translates virtual addresses to physical addresses for CPU instructions, and the data TLB, which translates virtual addresses to physical addresses for data. Modern systems typically implement both components, allowing them to work together and reap the benefits of both types. TLB entries are similar to page table entries, but aren't exactly the same. They do include the virtual page number, physical frame number, protection bits, and status bits. But they also include another important field called the Address Space Identifier, or ASID. This extra field links each TLB entry to a specific process ID that is currently running in the system. It not only protects process data from being accessed by other processes, but it also allows the TLB to store page table entries from multiple processes simultaneously. Without this field, the TLB would have to be flushed and repopulated every time a context switch occurred, negating most of the benefits of having the TLB in the first place. When an instruction requires memory access, the processor forwards the virtual address to the MMU, which splits the address into two parts, a virtual page number and a page offset. The page number is the sequential number of the page in virtual memory and is represented by the most significant bits of the address. The page offset is the location of a single byte of memory within the page and is represented by the least significant bits of the address. If the size of a page is 4 kilobytes, then it requires 12 bits to represent all bytes within that page. The rest of the address bits represent the page number. To translate a virtual address to a physical address, the MMU extracts the virtual page number from the address generated by the processor and uses it to find the corresponding physical frame number in the TLB. If the virtual page number is found in the TLB and is marked as valid, known as a TLB hit, the MMU replaces the virtual page number with the corresponding physical frame number while keeping the offset unchanged. This translated physical address is then used to access main memory and retrieve the requested data. If the virtual page number is not found in the TLB, the MMU sends a request to main memory to look for the entry in the full page table, which makes the translation process much longer. Once found, the entry is checked for validity. A valid frame number is combined with the page offset from the original memory address to create a complete physical address. This address is then used to access main memory and retrieve the requested data. The accessed page table entry is also copied into the TLB for faster future references. In case the frame number is invalid, the MMU will generate an exception called a page fault and dispatch it to the operating system. The same page fault exception is also generated if the page number is found in the TLB but is marked as invalid. 
Just as a side note, these exceptions are sometimes called traps, which occur in the context of a user process, but that term is not universally used, and every CPU manufacturer has its own definitions. When the operating system takes over, it performs checks to ensure that the program isn't trying to access memory that wasn't allocated, a violation often known as a segmentation fault. If everything is okay, the OS finds a free frame in physical memory, loads the requested page from disk, updates the page table with the newly mapped physical address, and finally, the accessed page table entry is copied into the TLB for faster future references. But what happens if the TLB is full and can't add new entries? Well, in this case, the TLB controller will evict one of the entries currently stored in the TLB memory and replace it with a new entry. The decision of which entry to replace depends on the TLB's replacement policy. Some TLBs use a form of the least recently used policy, which removes the entry that was least recently used, leaving the TLB with the most recently used memory addresses. Other TLBs might use simpler algorithms like round robin, which replaces entries sequentially, or random replacement, which randomly chooses a victim. Modern computers typically implement a hierarchy of TLBs to improve hit rates, much like data and instruction caches. If you're interested in how caches work, check out the short ebook I wrote. It includes basic cache concepts, architecture, the read-write process, and other more advanced topics. This is a great way to support the channel and get something in return. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and in the next video, we'll talk about the